hemmings and hawings. This is a show about talking. Here we dissect issues of the day and days gone by, moving voices at the margins to the center of our table in order to recontextualize personal experiences relative to others. I'm joined by an exceptional group of women whose depth of experience and virtual materiality have brought them through space and time to share their wisdom with us today. On my right, I have my good friend, and that woman, sure. Monica <laughs> Next to me, joining us from The View, is Supreme Mistress of Comedy and Feel Good Cinema, incomparable Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Did you think you were going to be doing talk shows? Believe it or not, I used to have a gossip hour back at Monticello called The Ironing Board. It was basically what you'd imagine, a panel of women disseminating information, engaging public opinion. Tom would stop by sometimes when we were interviewing visitors or doing cooking demonstrations. Like the rest of us, he liked watching chicken getting fried while doing his afternoon cardio exercises. <laughs> And a goddess. <laughs> yes, I thought of creating a show like yours, but the network wasn't buying it. Yeah, mainstream networks only use their time machines for romanticizing the past. Here on the fringes, we use it for more radical romance and to bring people back from the great beyond. We're thrilled to have with us that ever haunting vixen of the silver screen, object of all desire, Marilyn Monroe. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with headlines. Hillary Clinton has announced her bid to run for President of the United States of America. I know a lot of us have strong and personal feelings when it comes to Hillary and presidents. So, questions. What does Hillary mean to you? What would her presidency mean for our society? Monica, what about you? You've met Hillary, right? I wouldn't say that I've met her and spoken with her in a way that I would feel I know her. Um, it was very briefly, um, more handshakes. Handshake. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you were in competition with her? Hmm. Sometimes. Sure. She was the wife of this man that I was in love with. I wonder whether we feel competition with Hillary and with each other because of the formal and informal currencies of representation and respectability that seems scarce for women. She's earned it, don't get me wrong, but Hillary has a lot of something that we don't. The illusion of respect in the public realm and control in the private realm. Well, uh, things are quite different now. Are they, though? The great thing, as a woman, let's get to this, is that the things that we do in our homes or in our private lives are no longer private. There are no borders. The most personal is the most universal. You mean the personal is political? Yeah. Now, you know, Hillary Clinton uh, has sort of been talking about a lot of things she wants to do and she would do. And you know what? I see a really formidable woman into it. Hard work. Just, that's a powerful instrument. That's certainly true. But I think the next thing you have to learn how to do you know, Lita, is listen to the back of the room where I'm sitting. That's a big key. Big key. You know what I'm saying? Sir, we all want to be heard. For me, I want to try and call attention to some of the historical issues that have become easy to forget. Racism, homophobia, and plenty of other biases. Hillary Clinton could change all that doing something new and different. I don't know about that. <laughs> I would imagine that it is very difficult to be the President of the United States. I would imagine that you have a tremendous, tremendous amount of pressure. Anybody who's been in that situation knows. It's a lot of damn pressure. Who'll be judged? We all Every movement is exaggerated. Well, yes. And they look. I mean, they're going to take black people out of you. Let me tell you about being publicly separated from your truth for a young, somewhat indiscreet and a little emotional. They're very loving, very loyal, intelligent woman. I'm not embarrassed of who I am. No, I'm the same. I think I'm about to say. But there we are. There was me. And there was public Monica Lewinsky, constructed by the media with a little fact and a lot of fiction. But the two things rarely get into circulation, usually the false. 
the greater the distance between the you people want you to be and the you you actually are, the greater will be your anxiety, depression, sense of failure, and shame. We are ashamed. <clears throat> I can't explain to you personally. I was never used to being happy. I'm not just generally happy. If I'm generally anything, I guess I'm generally miserable. You know, sense of being loved and needed and wanted. It's absolutely useless. Sometimes it becomes really somebody. I don't know who. Maybe myself. Maybe others. Yeah. <laughs> I think the attention and judgment affect affected more than just me. The attention and judgment that I received was incredibly degrading. Incredibly degrading. Frankly, I came close to disintegrating. In the age of mechanical reproduction, it seems like we're, there are completely new ways of disintegrating and objectifying and degrading women. Yeah, you know, I'm not a lot of tea. I'm crank. We are not machines, no matter how much they want to say we are, we are not. Yeah, they think we're made on some assembly line. Girls never end, that's their beauty. Shoot one down and one even younger pops up in our place. But we're not. We each have a story, and the willingness to craft and articulate these stories, to deploy the type of vulnerability that was once confined to the domestic sphere, constitutes a very powerful and formidable tool as well. I wonder how Hillary will fare at storytelling. Before we move on, for those of us with fetishes for presidents, the big question, would you have an affair with Hillary? Would it make a good story? Yeah. Sure. Oh, baby, no. There's no girl <laughs> not to keep herself amused. <laughs> Fictional stories, stories from history, news stories, and personal stories. Yeah, so, while of course we're sympathetic to victims of hacking, we also wanted to talk with you about why you were so compelled to hide the story about your answer. First of all, listen, if you're critical of something and you know something's wrong, it's like watching a soap opera that an actor is in, reading lines that I don't want to say in a part that I don't want. This bears no relationship to who I am. <laughs> all right, let's get some things straight. Some girls will fall for that, but not me. Can I see a show of hands of anyone here who is a self without context? Yep, that's what I thought. Without my past, without all of those elements, I would be somebody else. I've been around my whole life, but I think I'm not the only guy who's experienced this. Thinking when looking at myself, that people not really or conflate us with our forefathers, and I really, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's fine. I am. I'm not sure. I'm a, I'm a big boy. My name is Ben, I'm my founder of Eastern Congo Initiative. I'm your father. I am the I'm the I am. I know best. I'm gonna get away with it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I must have said too many cups of coffee. Um, but it's, it's the mask come off and you find a reflection of a person who understands their country's past. And eventually, they make you look like a damn fool. Unduly bad. Crazy. So you're saying, back off a little. Do you understand I'm the victim here? Maybe you don't know what it was like for me. I know what it's like. What I've been. All my life I had to fight it. It's too wicky. <laughs> it's too wicky. It's too wicky. Out there who find the hardest resistance. No one can truly understand that I was affected. And what happens to you after a while is where they are. You feel a sense of lost innocence. Remember, we're in a dangerous world today and in the past. And I know it's hard, notably for women, minorities, and members of the LGBTQ community, the consequences have become dire. Are you getting used to it? Are you really getting used to it? Your impulse to bury this story, Ben, says more about the white privilege you've inherited than your ancestors' involvement in slavery does. You had a chance to be courageously vulnerable and illuminate our shared humanity, but you missed it. We are all vulnerable. No one is immune. 
where your empathic abilities come in. As you know, it's you who to apologize. And to get up over all of that. As you know. You get so tired of people coming in with their problems. They come in, they want a shoulder to cry on, and generally it turns out to be mine. I'm sorry. I think that you're defined by how you rise more than how you fall. justify the fact that we have a, uh, a lot of self-esteem, that we actually like who we are. I think that what I've learned is change around here. maybe I can do that. Disturb the universe. Yeah. Then my fantasy can come into play. God help me. You're trying many things. Everything you've done, already done. The thing that I really want to say is, you know, I'm poor. I may even be ugly, but dear God, I'm here. It feels very good. It's time. And time to take back your narrative. There you have it, Tituba. I hope that was clear. <laughs> okay, folks, that's our show for today. I'd like to take a moment to thank my guest, Ben Affleck, our studio audience, including Tituba and the woman who shared the space with me. Join us next week for another episode of Hemmings and Hines.